is that fall is the most elegant season of all. The world suddenly turns golden and there is an abundance everywhere. There are wonderful fragrances of the fresh crop of apples or pears and they bring in those huge boxes full of all kinds of winter squashes, not just butternut squash or an acorn squash, all kinds that you've never seen before, but you have to pull out a cookbook to figure out how to use wonderful shapes, so beautiful, and seeds everywhere you look. Fall is about elegance and abundance, not plastic pumpkins or even velvet pumpkins that you can buy at a craft store or a home decor store. It's about taking the opportunities to bring nature inside your home and enjoy the elegance and richness of the earth. All truly great memories begin with smells, fragrances that embed themselves in our brains. Now, we're going to start off with an activity that'll be fun, that'll do all of our senses, things that we smell, taste, see, feel. But if you don't feel like baking, here's a real trick hack. You take a little cinnamon or cloves or pumpkin pie spice, something like that. Sprinkle a couple tablespoons on a cookie sheet. Stick it in the oven at 200 degrees. And for an hour or so, those oils will be seeping out into your home and your home will smell wonderful. But if you would like to give a pumpkin pound cake a little bit of a try, it's the easiest recipe of all and I've included that in the description below and here are the directions for how to do it. All cake recipes start with preheat the oven and grease the pan. The next step is to combine the butter and the sugar on a low speed and once it's combined then you raise the speed and beat that for five to seven minutes until it's extremely fluffy and creamy. Then we're going to slowly add the eggs one at a time beating well after each addition. This is what makes the cake rise. So be sure to beat well and scrape down your edges and your bottom so that everything combines really well and add the eggs one at a time and through the magic of editing we're down to our last egg and we've beaten this extremely well it's creating an emulsion and uh, the, uh, the texture should be very very smooth then we are going to add the dry ingredients and the pumpkin alternating between the two so just you know like a third a third a third so we start off with each one and just beat long enough to incorporate it there's some vanilla and here comes some pumpkin and again beat it just long enough to incorporate it and scrape down every time you add something scrape down before you add and we're going to do it again, flour and the pumpkin. And that's the end of our pumpkin and we'll add that and then that will add the end of our flour and beat that just long enough to incorporate it and then scrape our sides down and give it another quick stir to make sure everything's well blended. Then we're going to put it in our Bundt cake pan which has been prepared. I don't grease in flour, I grease and sugar. So you can see my sugar into the Bundt pan and because it's so thick you will need to smooth it over on the top, stick it in the oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees and now you have about an hour and 15 to 20 minutes to work on some terrific ideas for decorating. One of my favorite things to decorate with is magnolia leaves. There are a couple of different ways to preserve magnolia leaves. My favorite being with glycerin. Now it's not a common item. 
This is a 16 ounce bottle of glycerin that I picked up at Michael's and it was $7.99. There's a smaller bottle that they sell at like CVS or something and it's $6.99 and that's in the beauty section. This one at the craft store is in the glue section. If you ask, they should be able to direct you to where it is. So there's food grade and non-food grade. We don't care. The leaves are not real picky. My little six ounce bottle that I got in the beauty section, the lotion section at the pharmacy, and I'm going to put 12 ounces of water and mix that with my six ounces. So it's two parts water, one part glycerin, and that is hot water. I did a steamy hot one so you could tell it was hot, but it doesn't need to be that hot. And this is kind of the consistency of syrup. And um, so a very viscous solution. And I just pour a little of that hot water in there to get all of it out rather than standing there holding the bottle as it drips out. And then I'm just gonna stir that up and that'll be the end of that. Now behind that, you see my big pickle jar. And inside of it, there is an amber colored solution. That is my old solution. As the um, leaves are used in it, it will turn the solution gold. And I am just going to refresh it. You can reuse it, it's no big deal. And it's nice to have a clear, glass jar so you can see what the level is and whether or not your stems are in the solution. Now let's get to work. Here are some magnolia leaves that I got and sometimes the directions will say to only have six inch stems or just use the leaves. You don't need to. I pull off any leaves that look kind of ratty and then I just stick them in. Now, because my stems are longer, it takes longer for them to absorb the solution, but that's okay. Um, it took about six weeks, four to six weeks, to turn them brown, and you can just shove them in there any way you want. It doesn't matter. It can be messy. Um, Yeah, now when it's all the way full, do look down in the bottom and you can make sure your stems are there. Now I display my pickle jar full of magnolia leaves being preserved in the window in my family room. And you can see how the leaves absorb the solution up through the veins and then the vein begins to turn brown and the leaf gradually over time gets more and more brown. And you can tell when you're getting close Sometimes the direction will say when you, know, when you think you're finished, take them out and turn them upside down, that sort of thing. Now, here we are with my glycerin leaves and some faux florals and some ornamental grasses that I will be using. Um, this, I chose this one because the berries are a different texture and a lighter color that will contrast with my preserved magnolia leaves. And I open that up and that's kind of working as my support. And you can see how the leaves from the glycerin, they are supple um, and look much more natural shape-wise. And they tend to have a pretty mahogany kind of a color, kind of a golden brown sort of color that's just beautiful. And if you don't happen to have um, uh, an urn just exactly like mine. You can use any container. If it's a light container, lightweight, um, you put some pebbles in it to hold it steady because this is going to get a little top heavy if you don't have some ballast at the bottom. So feel free to do that. If your uh, the mouth of your container is too large, you can add some chicken wire inside of it to hold it steady or you can use some floral tape across it to make a little grid and that'll hold things secure as you place them in there. And unlike the faux flowers that have wire, you can't bend these. You have to pretty much work with what you have. Um, now these are some faux berries that are a similar mahogany kind of a color. And again, I like the texture of those to give us a different shape. And I just place them around. 
and pull them down so you can actually see them. If they're inside the leaves, they really don't show at all. So pulling them down so we can see them. And I only had three of those. So there's not a lot of foam material in this. A lot of these things you can pick up, especially like flowers like these, at, at uh, thrift stores for next to nothing. And, and these are inexpensive little flowers, not the real pricey ones. And I like the red, kind of brings out the red in the leaves. And then I end with, these are some ornamental grasses. Oops. Okay, you see how heavy that is. Um, the ornamental grasses are all over the place. You can just, you know, parking lots, old parking lots, I'll have them as their decor and you can just go chop a few down. And, um, or talk to a neighbor that has and ask if you can use them. And they're just natural grasses that I found growing. And I think they add, again, some texture and a little movement there. Now, if you're looking at that and going, uh, that looks a little lopsided. Yeah, that's what happens when you can't actually stand back and look at what you're doing. I was avoiding blocking the camera and my husband's like, uh, that's lopsided. So I'll just pull that out and shape that up a little bit. Yeah. So I have to balance it from right to left. Now, if you want to do it a little more Japanese, you can leave it lopsided. Very artistic. You don't have to make it perfectly symmetrical. And mine's not symmetrical, but not quite as artistic as the Japanese would have. Uh, but now it looks a little smushy on top. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to stand that guy up and see if I can't give it a little more height there. Okay. Oops. Lost flower, so I have to stand my flower back up. Um, but it's okay. We're getting there. Yeah, that's looking okay. And I'm gonna display it on top of the piano. And I think it'd be pretty. A little vignette. There's my grandmother's clock. And I think oops, there's a glare on that. That helped. And some candles. I'm gonna light the candles, and I think that makes a pretty vignette. Now the next thing I did was. I read online that you could use Mod Podge, just your basic Mod Podge, and you paint the leaves. Now, the thing about a magnolia leaf is it's really glossy on the front and kind of fuzzy on the back. So it didn't say paint the front and the back, so I did some on the front and some on the back. And the problem with the Mod Podge, a couple of problems with the Mod Podge. The first problem is I had to lay them down to dry them and so it kind of distorted the shape of them and then the next thing is as they dry they became very brittle so that's kind of a downside but the upside is they can create some interesting colors by using that technique this, these have the Mod Podge on them and um, they turn an, an, a paler shade of green, but I just kept that on the coffee table in my family room. Now, here is going to be our next arrangement. These are my Mod Podge leaves, and you can see there's a little more green in them. And I've got other, other things I've found. And I'm going to add acorn squash and put this on a low tray. And here are some faux florals and some dried hydrangeas. Now, this is what the leaves are like. They're brittle, they can break, but you can see how one of them has a really interesting color, but they can break. So they are definitely brittle, unlike the glycerin ones. Now, this one's pretty. There's a, a seed pod there, and there's some squash. Yeah, and you can always do things in threes. And I'm going to be rotating these. The squash will last, last approximately one month. And since we eat the squash, what we'll do is we'll just eat it and I'll buy a replacement. And uh, then we'll keep it and I can use this arrangement for several months during the fall. Now that one was too long so I chopped it off to kind of put it in there. Now anything around is roly-poly. So there they're all rolling around. And this one, the stem is a a bit long so I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna break that off and this one I have to have a 360 because people might be sitting on either side of the table there's not a good top and a bottom here 
And here are some faux florals, just inexpensive faux florals. And again, looking at threes, there's a dried hydrangea from last fall. The dried hydrangeas can last for several years. I just cut them off after they lose their leaves and not very much because mine blooms on old wood. Um, and another one of those sunflowers. And I'm you know, trying to figure out where to put the next one. So it'll be pretty from the back. And here's another little dried hydrangea. Now, this is an odd little piece I have in my hand. I think that's a pod that some little insect was growing in or something. But I thought it was interesting. That's a milkweed pod. It was kind of like a pale pickle. I wish I'd picked the whole thing. And here is our finished table and of course our cake is done so we've got the cake with the praline topping and some figs from my neighbor's yard and there it is the elegant tastes and smells and sights of fall some other fun ways to inexpensively add some fall decor to your home are to look at the wonderful seeds and things that are just in the neighborhood around you. Um, I grew up with a, a wonderful woman as a part of my life, my mother's best friend, Levita. We called her Mama Bita. That's how close we were. She was our second mom for sure. And she would stop the car on the side of the road in West Texas where not much grows but weeds. And she would pull over and she would cut weeds and grass seeds. She would also collect old bottles. And so I've just got an old green bottle and some beautiful seeds. One of my neighbors is a young guy who doesn't mow real regularly. He's a nice guy, but he sometimes lets some of the grass get out of control. And these grass seeds are a wonderful magenta color. And I know he was just going to mow them down. so. I plucked some of those, and they're all different kinds of seeds that I use all around my house. Um, you can see grass seeds, flower seeds. Another thing I do, and again, I got this from Levita. Levita would find anything from nature and create a wonderful little vignette out of it. This vignette is a simple bird's nest that we found in a bush a bottle with some grass seeds in it, and an inexpensive little bird figurine that I paid $1.25 for. Now, Levita would have fussed at me and said, you could have gotten that for 25 cents. Um, so she was always very, very frugal. The world is so full and rich, we don't need to spend a lot of money to make elegant, beautiful decor choices in our home. So I encourage you to, to be brave, try different things, invest in a bottle of glycerin, preserve some things, get some dried things, and create some beauty in your home too. Thanks for joining us. Remember, the most creative solutions and the best stories begin with the biggest challenges. See you next time.